Technology is the future. What's it going to look like? Stay with us and you'll find out. I'm John O'Leary, Executive Editor of Better, Faster, Cheaper, and I'm here today with Jerry Meckling, a professor here at the Kennedy School, an expert in technology and public sector innovation. Jerry, thanks for being with us today. Delighted to be here, John. Uh, you've argued that the character of innovation is changing. We've always had technical change in government, but now it seems to be taking on a different nature. What's that about? The big thing, I think, historically, is that technology, when it was really expensive, could only be used for high volume, standardized, routine things, financials, okay. payroll. That's been there since John Lindsay was mayor in New York when I was working down there. Right. Since then, the big shift has been online, not inline. Technology was used to make uh, existing processes faster, more ubiquitous and 24 seven, and yes. also to, to upgrade the services to a certain extent. And that's what's happened primarily now. Okay. But we're gonna go deeper than that. All right, what's the future look like? The future will be not just changing the end step of delivery, but changing all the steps in the process and the supply to the process. It will be <clears throat> much more intensive and much more innovations-based, which will be much scarier for many people. So instead of simply technology enabling us to do similar sorts of things faster, better, more conveniently, there's going to be a change in the very essence of what happens based on technology. Can, is that... A fair description? That's a fair description. And what it means is that the technology itself is a less important element. It's the leadership to get people to agree we have to try the new ways. So, so some of the disruptive uh, uh, impact that technology has had in the private sector include things like the newspaper business. And the existing interests are taken out of the loop in the same way that the printing press wiped out the scribe industry, right? Mm -hmm. And so, realistically, you have to think that going forward, there are going to be government activities that simply are not in a new technological environment going to be adding value anymore. They're going to have to go away. That's hard to do in government, though, right? Extraordinarily hard. It's one of the reasons that government tends to be a laggard rather than at the leading edge. <clears throat> Although government can only fall so far behind of people's expectations until there's enough pressure to do things, and particularly when jobs can move anywhere in the world, right. a government that isn't effectively able to support the infrastructure for a good economy, its people lose. And so we are seeing pressure and we're seeing possibility to come together to, I think, a new wave of innovation that will be beyond delivery to the entire production and it'll be an interesting ride. Interesting. Give me an example of uh, where this sort of uh, fundamental shift has taken place through technology. You mentioned New York City. Sure. Well, again, I mentioned how old I was with New York City, with, with Mayor Lindsay, but I had uh, a meeting with the mayor in the re-election summer of 1969, and the mayor was in a meeting, <clears throat> and it involved technology. And he pulled me aside afterwards and said, very interesting meeting, Jerry. Why did I have to be here? You know, the, the argument was, of course we need a better payroll for the next mayor, but there's an election going on. Why did I have to be here? And okay. there are a lot of politicians who said that's somebody else's job. Mayor Bloomberg came to be mayor with a different personal history. Bloomberg had been into technology deeply, and the 311 system that New York City put in because the mayor committed to it and stayed committed to it, it was a very important advance for the city and an example of the kind of leaders that I think are coming forward. When you see the current leadership uh, Crop. Uh, Bloomberg, I think Mark Warner, when he was the governor of Virginia, both of them had personal experience with what the technology could do. And that Part of the thing with the 311 system is it's not just a better way of taking in uh, a report of a problem in the neighborhood or a leaky fire hydrant. It also is a different relationship between the city and the information about itself. Can you explain on that a little bit? Uh, yes. Uh, if you just take in the request, you've done something because you've been able to reach people in multiple languages uh, in an easy way for them to make a phone call. So that's good. But what's particularly good then, if you can take it the next step and turn that into work orders, 
turn those work orders into visible performance reviews, and turn all of that into a system that recognizes what's working, what's not working, can we do more of that which is working, and right. get rid of that which isn't. And that's what systems need to do to adapt, and I think it was Darwin who said it's not the strong that survive, it's the adaptable. Can you give one piece of advice to our innovators out there who uh, are in the public sector and want to make use of technology to transform their organizations? Yes. Uh, the big piece of advice is this is not somebody else's problem. This is not a technology problem. This is a leadership problem that makes it your problem. That is absolutely fabulous. Again, I'm John O'Leary for Better, Faster, Cheaper. This has been Jerry Meckling, Professor of uh, Public Policy and Information Technology at the Harvard Kennedy School. Thanks for joining us.